Okay. So, let us now try to see the uh, nonlinear effect of channel. So, when do we say a channel is nonlinear? We can say if suppose I have a signal called G t which is being transferred over the channel and after passing through the channel if I expect a output y t which is just not the linear means uh, part of it or linear uh, means uh, just transformation of it. It also gives some square cube and all other terms. So, if this looks like this some a 0 which is the constant term then a 1 into g t plus some a 2 into g a 2 into g square t and dot 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 as many things are there. So, up to this the channel is linear okay, because whatever you give you uh, get the linear uh, means all the linearity property of that LTI system we have talked about that will be satisfied. But if you just go to this whenever it start taking the square term or any other higher term you will see that it is basically creating means that LTI the property of that is not no longer holding and it will start creating some spurious frequency term that is something we, we are interested now. Okay. So, that is what will be happening it means it is little bit clearer because you can see if as long as it is just up to this part the linear term or the first order term then what happens if I do a Fourier transform. So, the frequency component that will be involved in it will be still the frequency component that is already involved in G t. Okay. So, it will just be equivalent frequency component in the output whereas, if I start taking this term what does this means G square t in frequency domain what that will be G f means if the G t has a Fourier transform of G f then it should be convolution of G f with itself. Whenever we convolute very simple example is if I take that box function. Okay. If I convolute this box function with itself this will create a triangular function. So, it will look like this and if this is band limited to b that box function the way it is this will go up to minus 2 b plus 2 b the bandwidth gets doubled and so on. If you start creating taking g cube it will actually occupy 3 times the bandwidth and it will keep on increasing one after another. Okay. So, I can see already if I take the nonlinear part nonlinear portion first of all just think about this signal this particular signal. Okay, this is the box signal coming from sync function. So, if my signal was sync okay, sin c corresponding g f should be this if I just take that second order term what will happen I will get this. So, within the band what is happening there is a distortion already the box function has been transformed to a triangular function. So, there is a distortion within the channel, but the good means bad part is it is now starting to create some distortion out of band. Okay. So, suppose I had an expectation that my particular thing like voice it is band limited it, it is up to minus b to plus b I modulate it and put it in the channel right and the neighboring channel I also put another voice. So, those two voice are being carried over the channel. Now, if the channel has non-linearity then for this signal as well as the neighboring signal which is also a suppose a box signal okay, in frequency domain. So, for both of them it will start creating this non-linear effect. So, they will spread in frequency domain the earlier one we have seen when it was having means dispersion it was getting spreaded in time domain. Here what we are seeing due to non-linear effect probably we are getting spread in frequency domain and that is now creating a inter channel interference. So, earlier one was intra channel interference this is called inter that is something which will be happening whenever we pass it through a nonlinear channel. But of course, what will happen the channel is 
it might be non ideal but these coefficients will be very small because generally channel will not do too much of means will not create too much of non linearity it will create some amount of non linearity but the coefficients will be pretty small and accordingly you'll see the effect of it okay but whatever it is you have to always keep this in mind that channel might show some non linearity and accordingly you have to combat okay so how you will combat will uh, later on we'll see but this is something you have to be sure that the channel might be the ideal channel distortionless channel we have talked about it might not be this so it might have that dispersion which we have discussed already if the phase is not non ideal or the amplitude is non ideal in the transfer function or the channel might be just a uh, non linear thing uh, which will create this kind of interference so let us just give one example so if we just have a signal yt which is something like this which is uh, let's say xt plus some this is just an example uh, taken from the book so let's say if this is this is my yt as you can see it's already the nonlinear coefficient is pretty small okay so that x square t the corresponding coefficient is pretty small that's what will be happening generally okay now let us see let us examine what kind of effect we'll be getting with this so let us say i put a xt which is something like this 2000 sink 2000 pi t okay so it's a sink function in frequency domain why we have taken a sink function because we want to uh, represent it as a box function okay in frequency domain so this is uh, our xt so definitely xf will be a box function of duration 2000 okay so that that is the case if i pass this thing function over the channel then my yt should be 2000 sink 2000 pi t plus this will be there and then 2000 square so 2000 square into this will give you this number 0 0.316 okay mm, or let's say 2000 square not 2000 square you multiply this by 2000 you get this and there will be another 2000 which will be left and then you get a sink square okay so i can write this as this is just a means if i take yf this is just a box function okay of strength 2000 or sorry the width 2000 and this is just 316 if i take and this is actually a triangular function so i can take a triangular function of this one 4000 okay because 2000 convoluted with 2000 box function so that creates a 4000 band triangular function so if i just plot them they look like this the first part will be that's this part that remains the same function which is a box function running from this 1000 to plus 1000 okay and the next one is if i see this one it has a strength of 0 0.316 so at this tip it should be 0 0.316 and it should be going as a triangular function going from minus 2000 to plus 2000 okay what will be happening i will have addition of these two so if i just see it should look like this and there should be some part okay, like this right so this should be my overall output function yf now you can see there is a distortion because ideally i should have expected this thing this is the distortion part which is coming in band so nonlinearity actually has two effect it corrupts your signal and it corrupts other signal as well so it has a distortion and not only that out of band it has created some spurious thing which will create distortion to others okay so you have to be 
very careful about a nonlinear channel because nonlinear channel creates not only problem for you, it will also additionally create problem for all your neighboring FDM channels or it start creating inter channel interference that is something we should be very careful. So, if the channel is nonlinear, we should be very careful about it okay. and accordingly we should combat. So, there are methods of combating nonlinear channel, uh, but right now we, we are just stating what should be the ideal channel and if there is a deviation what should be the effect on the signal. Okay. Because whenever we have said we wish to do communication, we have almost assumed as if the channel was ideal. So, we have characterized what do we mean by ideal that means whatever we transmit we are almost expecting all the time that at the receiver I will be receiving almost similar thing. This is probably not true as you can now see. Okay. So, it can have dispersion we have already talked about that, it can have nonlinearity. this is something we are now talking about. Next we will talk about something else okay. which is called it is specially being observed in a wireless channel which is called multi path effect of fading. Okay. So, what is this? Whenever you transmit a signal with your antenna, most probably you would not be able to restrict means if the antenna is omnidirectional then you would not be able to restrict the signal to a particular direction and generally in many cases that is not the intention because uh, you do not know exactly where your receiver is. You target your antenna to a particular direction with a very pencil precise pencil beam probably you miss the target. You, you do not get you do not transmit the signal where the user is. Okay. So, that is not very good. So, generally I would not bother myself to see where my recipient is, I will just broadcast the signal on the air. So, that means I need a omnidirectional antenna and which will broadcast in every direction the signal. And what will happen? When you are broadcasting, you are not sitting in a free space, right? Uh, means uh, and then transmitting it. You are sitting in some locality where there are buildings, there are trees, there are uh, many other things which can be act, which can act as a reflector to your signal. So, what might happen? Suppose I have a reflector over here. This is my receiver antenna. This is my transmitter antenna. So, whenever I transmit it goes in every direction. So, the one that goes over this direction will directly be received, one that goes in this direction okay, this will be reflected back or some portion of that will be reflected back it might absorb something it might scatter something on other direction, but some portion of that will be reflected back and that will still be received over here. This particular model is called multipath effect. Even in other scenario um, where we have a guided communication like let us say uh, fiber optic communication. Okay. So, if we have a fiber optic communication there also you will be you will have some diameter of your core where you are launching the light and then due to total in internal reflection the so basically the core looks like this and there is a cladding of that fiber and you launch the opti means uh, light and then it gets totally internally reflected and gets guided. But what will happen there also there might be different rays launched at different angles and they will go through different path length. Okay. So, there also the same phenomena will be happening. So, whatever happens this might be a very low dimension that is why there will be not much difference between those rays. Whereas, here there will be huge amount of difference the ray that, that goes directly to a receiver and the ray that takes a detour and there might be multiple reflectors. So, multiple such things can be happening. Okay. So, all those things will get inside this effectively what is happening effectively suppose let us say I again let us take a uh, means example of pulse I transmit a pulse some portion of its power is getting directly linked. So, the delay on this will be much lesser whereas, some portion of that power is getting on this link. So, there the delay will be higher. So, basically multipath means it is 
different delayed signal replica of that same signal is coming and sitting at the receiver. Okay. This is what happens whenever we talk about multipath fading. Okay. So, let us just try to see a, a channel model where only two rays we can think about. Okay. So, that two ray model one is straightly going uh, to the receiver and the other one is getting reflected from another uh, reflector and coming back. Okay. So, the first one the ray which is going directly that will have some delay because transmitter receiver are not co-located. So, there should be some delay of T d after which you will be receiving. Okay. And there can be a further signal which gets little bit more attenuation let us say alpha why that is happening because it is taking a longer path then getting reflected that might absorb some amount of signal. So, that will have higher attenuation probably and after that it will also go through a delay which is definitely greater than T d because it is taking a longer path. So, that should be T d plus some delta let us say and these two signal will be added simply at the receiver because the receiver cannot separate them they are just coming from different direction receiver also has a omnidirectional antenna because he also does not know from which direction his signal will be coming. So, he has to keep a omnidirectional antenna. So, all the things which will be coming from that particular transmitter will all be linked to him they are all in same frequency. So, you have no way to separate them. So, they will all come into your receiver and will be received. So, if I now see the channel even though it was usual channel that has a different characteristics now. So, this is now my channel characteristics due to this propagation model. Okay. If just two rays are there, if there are multiple rays I have to put that many arms with all different alpha values and different dis delta values. I will have to put all those multiple arms and all of them should be summed over here and that is why we probably do not call that at, as two path, it is multi path. So, multiple path can be there all of them should be accounted for my signal analysis. For simplicity and uh, to get some insight we are just taking two ray model or two path model. Okay. So, if this is the case what is the transfer function of this filter let us try to first identify. This is just a delay element. So, that should give me if I try to characterize H f that should be just e to the power minus j 2 pi f T d. Okay, it is just a delay element of fixed delay T d. So, it should give means I have not taken any attenuation over here. So, it should give me ideally 1 as the amplitude and the delay should be this plus because there is a adder. So, plus there should be a attenuation of alpha. So, it should be alpha into e to the power minus j 2 pi f this delay should be T d plus T. Right. So, this is what we get this is my H f. Now, let us try to see the amplitude part of H f and the phase part of H f. Okay. So, I can take out e to the power minus j 2 pi f T d what do I get? I get 1 plus this I can write with the Euler's theorem again as cos plus j something. Okay. So, I can write cos 2 pi f right. So, wait a second 2 pi f T d is already gone. So, 2 pi f T plus j sin 2 pi f T right I can write it is it T or delta T or oh, sorry delta I have just written T. So, that should be delta yes. So, I can write it this way fine. Now, I have to get the phase part and the amplitude part. So, this is already a complex one I need to first try to evaluate the amplitude part of that. So, that should be square root of this square. So, 1 plus cos 2 pi f delta square plus this square right. So, sin square 2 pi f delta right and there should be a alpha right somewhere so we have missed that alpha. Alpha by no alpha ok. So, that should be alpha square yes we missed that alpha. So, if I just simplify this 
what we get root over 1 plus this should be alpha square cos square plus alpha square sin square that should be giving me alpha square plus 2 alpha this should be means that is 2 alpha cos this one right that is my amplitude and also similarly I can evaluate the phase that should be just tan inverse this minus this right. So, I get this phase is already there plus that tan inverse part. So, I should be getting exponential minus j I get 2 pi f t d which is this phase plus tan inverse that this thing divided by this whole thing right. So, I can just write that part it is just this part comes in the numerator and this whole part goes in the denominator ok. So, I have now evaluated for that h f the amplitude and the phase spectrum or phase part right. Now, let us see what kind of amplitude and phase it has. So, this amplitude if I carefully observe it what is happening it is actually with respect to delta it has a modulation or it is a sinusoidal ok. So, basically if I wish to plot that amplitude it is a periodic signal I should say well this will be happening in the amplitude. So, this is h f there should be some with some period it is actually oscillating. So, that depends on this ok and then phase if I wish to plot. So, this is suppose the phase. So, phase has a linear part this part plus tan inverse something which is also oscillatory because we have a cos term and sin term. So, that is also oscillatory. So, phase will also be with some other oscillation will have a oscillatory part because it is also a periodic signal whatever oscillation that will be that might not be exactly cosinusoidal or sinusoidal, but that will have some oscillatory part. So, whenever we do a multipath or two path fading. So, this is the impairments or this is the uh, impurities that we see in the channel characteristics. And if you just try to characterize it little bit more what can we see? Let us say I had that amplitude spectra right that is 1 plus alpha square plus 2 alpha cos 2 pi f delta delta right. So, this was the case, this was something we were having ok. So, in this if we just put this f equals to n by 2 delta ok, if we just put this ok. So, what do we expect over here if I am putting this? So, immediately what do we get? So, if we have this n now I can put I can start putting n as odd and even right. So, let us say n I put as odd immediately what will be the value of this? This must be minus 1 right that whole thing right. And then if we just calculate this how much this will be 1 minus alpha whole square square root. So, that is 1 minus alpha. Now, let us say alpha equals to 1 I am just approximating that both the paths are having similar strength if this is happening. Then what do I get? I get nothing because my h f modulus of that gets 0. So, all the frequency term which has this value where n is odd will give me nothing at the output. And if I just take it as even and if I take again alpha equal to 1 this will be just instead of becoming 1 minus 1 this will be 1 plus 1 ok. So, that will be a huge strength that will be coming to my receiver. So, what I can now see depending on this f I have a different characteristics basically the h f is this undulation is there that means, some of the frequencies are really getting heavily attenuated ok. If the alpha is 1 this will almost go like this. Okay, so, this will be 0 in some of the frequency, in some of the frequency it is very high okay, that is exactly what is happening. 
which is a which is termed as you might have heard about this term that is called frequency selective fading. So, what my channel the way I have characterized it I have taken two path model and with that two path I have characterized the overall characteristics of the channel. Okay. So, that H f I have evaluated then I could see that that H f phase and frequency response both have some undulation or some modulation or I should say it is periodic in nature. And then going deep into the details of it what I could do is I could set this alpha equal to 1 and then try to see if I put this f as n by 2 delta. So, 2 delta gets cancelled and this is pi into n right and now n if I put odd or even I get different result for this cos it might be plus 1 or minus 1 whenever I put odd it is minus 1 whenever I put even it is plus 1 and accordingly I can see a destructive interference and constructive interference is being created. So, different frequency term because different n I put different frequency I will be getting for different frequency I will be getting a different characteristics and this exactly is termed as frequency selective fading. That means, your channel acts differently over different frequency band okay. and there are methods to actually uh, combat these things. So, what you do if you really wish to transmit a very broadband signal over a channel which has this kind of characteristics what will happen some of the selectively it will actually attenuate some of the some portion of the signal and selectively it will enhance some portion of the signal or it will transmit as it is some portion of the signal that is not very good. Instead of that if you can segregate your entire frequency band into smaller smaller bands and in each band you transmit something then you will have less effect of frequency selective fading and that is what is being done in uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplier. So, which probably is not the topic of our discussion over here, but this, this is what people do instead of utilizing the whole band they subdivide the band into smaller bands and they try to transmit something on that those smaller bands independently. So, that they can be detected independently in a of course, in a smarter way uh, which is part of that OFDM, but this is the basis for doing that and that is why in a typical wireless channel people do this because you can see that multipath fading comes from a wireless channel and we could also understand the frequency selective fading part of a channel this will always come in a multipath channel. How do we combat immediately uh, this comes to our, our uh, mind because in this particular course we would not be uh, actually dealing with multipath fading in most of the time. So, maybe we can just give some hint uh, how we can combat this. So, whatever has happened to the channel can we reverse that. So, that means a particular portion if we just go back to that same channel suppose let us say some part of the signal has been delayed, but less delayed some part of the signal has been higher delayed and some part of the signal has not been attenuated some part of the signal has been higher attenuated. Okay. If I just do the reverse thing. Okay. So, I also almost the reverse because whatever has happened in the channel I want to really negate that or nullify that. What I can do if I can just do the reverse thing that means, whoever has got lower delay can I give higher delay to him and whoever has got higher delay can I give lower delay to him whoever has got higher attenuation I give lower attenuation. So, this is actually called channel equalization. Okay. This is something which you will be seeing in your digital communication course heavily uh, channel equalization is a very important factor uh, for your receiver designing, but that is what is channel equalization that means, means you assume that channel will have this multipath effect and you try to equalize or that means you try to reverse that and that is being generally realized with a tapped delay line. So, that means, you actually take the signal you tap at different power level and then you actually adjust with a particular attenuation factor as well as a delay factor and try to again add them together 
to negate the channel. Now, what will be the coefficient, optimal coefficient of this delay and as well as this uh, alpha that you have to actually understand or you have to know. That is why what they do, they train the channel. That means, you first transmit a known signal over the channel, try to adjust this parameters, try to see whether that known signal can be e better realized after doing all these things. Adjust all those parameters of alpha that means, the attenuation factor that you are putting and the delay factor you are putting, you equalize them, this is actually called the equalization. You equalize them so that you get a better response. Then once you have characterized the inverse of the channel and assuming that the channel is not time varying, that means the channel is not varying over time, this reflection and all those things are almost fixed. It is almost coming from a building, not from a car or something which is moving up object. If this is the assumption, underlying assumption, then the channel will remain the same and then the equalization that you have done that you can use for unknown signal detection. Okay. So, this is what people do uh, for doing channel equalization uh, and of course, in this course we will not be dealing with that, but this is a very important uh, phenomena that happens in the channel and you have to means I have just given this example to let you know that how you can actually combat it physically. Okay. So, this is something which almost uh, means uh, tell us what are the things that can be there in the channel and these are the things which you have to combat. We will probably, we still have not touched something which is another impairment uh, which will detrimentally affect our uh, transmission that is called the noise. So, next plus onward what we will try to do is, we will try to characterize noise first because that is uh, means even if you do not have wireless channel because noise can be even generated at receiver. So, even if you do not have a channel still noise can be there. So, it is that detrimental. So, if you are transmitting means the transmitter and receiver are at the same location, you do not have a channel, no imp impairments coming from the channel, still you can have noise because your transmitter receiver can generate noise and we will try to characterize noise. So, uh, and that is why probably noise is the most important thing which has to be combated and we will devote quite a number of uh, classes towards understanding the noise better and then towards understanding how do you combat noise or in presence of noise what kind of things you should expect. So, those things we will try to analytically uh, devise those things and we have to really to get a good understanding of those things we need to have a good understanding of random process. So, our next few classes will be devoted towards understanding random process. Okay, thank you.